Hello and welcome to a Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 2. This is very exciting. It's the first time I'm playing the mod since Holy Fury came out and it's the first mod I'm playing in Holy Fury so it's very interesting to see what the mod makers have actually done with all of the new mechanics available to them. But before we get into all of that, we have to talk about what character we're playing today. We're playing Doran Martell and if you don't know anything about him, here's the little 10 second blurb from the game and I'll give you my 10 second kind of idea of where his head's at and where uh, we're going to push things going forward in the series. So, 16 years ago, the Lannisters killed my sister and her little children when they eventually sided with Robert Baratheon in the damned War of the Usurper. We shall stay out of this war for now, but we will have our revenge. Now, obviously what that's talking about is if we have a look at the Iron Throne here, they're in a bunch of wars for the Iron Throne. And there's a bunch of wars going on that we don't need to care about right now because we're not in them. But we will care about it in a second. Um, so, we're playing as Doran Martell, and why hasn't he joined the war? Well, everybody else in his family pretty much has the same idea. They want revenge for what the Lannisters did. They are all focused on the revenge train. That is their number one priority. Doran, he's a little bit different. He's thinking long term. He's like, okay, we could get revenge on the Lannisters, but he has a different goal in mind. He wants to get the Iron Throne. And he wants to get it for his children, and he wants to secure it. So, that's what we're going to be trying to do. Now, if we have a look at Doran here, he has a bloodline, which is all new. So basically, the bloodlines, they were, there was a sub-mod for um, this mod, which brought in bloodlines. I don't know exactly how that worked, but I imagine they're fairly similar to how they're implemented here. But basically, it gives some opinion with Doranish people, which makes sense. We have the blood of an, you know, ancient Doranish person. But we also get a claim on the Kingdom of Doran just for having the bloodline, which is very, very neat. And I think if we go and have a look around the place, if we look at the Reach, we'll see same kind of stuff. They have blood, they have a claim. Look at the North, same kind of stuff. They have blood, they have a claim. Y you get the idea. They, they all have claims on what they should have. I believe there are a few others. Like, if I go and have a look at... Well, I have no idea where she is, but... Uh, Daenerys probably also has a bloodline and some claims, but she's she's somewhere in here right now, I think. Um, I, she gets some events that bring her out somewhere else. Anyway, so we're going to be doing that. I have, however, changed some game rules, and we're going to talk about them slightly. I'm just going to uh, kind of scroll through here so you can have a look at all the rules while I talk about some of them. So things I've turned off. Does your drift uh, I've turned off. Now, why have I turned off does your drift? Well, basically, I want to make sure that everything is how it is so i want to make sure that everyone has claims what they should have i we're probably not going to be playing the game that long so it makes a lot of difference but basically does your drift means like um the reach will always be this mountain land doran will be this land stormlands will be this land makes a lot of sense but in keeping with that i've also turned uh, on does your titles now does your titles goes down one further so it goes down to the high lordship so if we have a look at high lordships here you see that we have Tumbletown, right? Now, if this guy, for instance, didn't hold any land in Tumbletown, he would still be High Lord of Tumbletown, for whatever reason. I've turned that off. He, if he holds no land within it, he is no longer High Lord of it. That's the way that it now works. I've also turned on interfaith marriages, so that we can marry with people from across the seas and all of that sort of stuff. Um, I've turned off assaults in the game. So assaults are basically when you... Um, go to a province with more than the number of troops that you need. So say we went to this one and we had 10,000 troops, right? We could just assault it down and within, you know, half a second, we would have taken that land. I've turned that off and the reason I've done that is to make wars a little bit longer and deliberately to try and make there be battles because when you can't just siege down everything quickly, it kind of naturally leads to a lot more battle states and it, it makes wars have a little bit more heft to them. Opposed to one side just instantly rolling over the other, which occasionally happens. Also means that allies are more useful in this kind of mod. So say uh, Roseford got attacked by the Reach. Right now, if I didn't have assaults on, they would be absolutely screwed. Because the Reach would walk over here, they'd assault it down, that'd be the end of it. But, say Roseford had an alliance with the North, with having assaults uh, turned off. While uh, the Reach are sieging that down, the North can get their troops, they can march the way down there. Roseford would probably still lose, but there'd be a chance and there might be a battle and it'd be all sorts of cool stuff. And I've also turned on Dynastic uh, Stability. And this option basically makes it so that, um, say, this, uh, say the Baratheons at some point just lose the Stormlands. They completely lose it. And then some point later, somebody inherit 
inherits the Stormlands, they can choose to take on that dynasty. So they can choose to have it be the same as somebody who used to hold it, basically. That, that's the way that it works, as far as I understand it. Anyway, uh, so that's what we got going on here. Let's have a look at Dorne. So, uh, what are we going to choose as our focus in life? Well, it's not war. That's not really what we're all about. Intrigue is definitely something that Dorne does. Rulership as well seems like a sensible one for him. Um, hunting, not really. Seduction, not really. Scholarship and theology, not really. Family is definitely one that fits with him quite a lot. You know what, I might take family, yeah. Yeah, we'll take family here. And then ambition, uh, see our house rule the Iron Throne. Easy. That's our ambition, that's our goal. Right. Uh, we can also see our treasury where we have a cup, we have a book and a crown and all that sort of stuff, but not so important. Right, uh, we have to set our crown focus, that's going to be Sunspear. We also need to give our children some education. So, what, is it children? Uh, yeah, so that's Doria and Obelis. Oh, so these are Oberyn's children. Oh, okay, that's fine. Uh, Oberyn's children, I don't, I have absolutely no idea. Um, maybe he'd teach them, I don't know, etiquette? I'm, I'm basically just going off nothing here. For etiquette and then, I don't know, struggle. Sure. And then our son, uh, Christine, um, I don't know. We have to choose what kind of education we're going to give him. Maybe diplomatic makes a lot of sense for him. And then, uh, Aaliyah, uh, she's going to have a an intrigue education. That seems to be where everything's pointing for. We'll give her an intrigue education. Right. Need a designated regent. Designated regent is going to be what well, should be. Oh, I think Oberyn makes a lot of sense. Well, so we'll just put him in there. He's our brother. Kind of makes sense for him to be our regent. In terms of bodyguards, we can assign a few more. We could assign the uh, Sand Snakes. That'd be interesting. Um, not sure. Sure, we'll we'll have some of them. Right. Uh, anyone else we want to put in here as our bodyguard? Um. Well, there's no reason not to put people in here. So is anybody really good? Oberyn could be our bodyguard. Sure, that makes sense. Uh, and then how about Gascoigne here? Sure, whatever. That wor that works out for me. Not overly worried. Apparently we have a city title. Uh, I get the feeling we should give that away. Uh, yeah, we'll just create a new vassal there. Give that one away because we're not allowed to hold it. Need a treasurer to be given a job. So you're going to go collect taxes in our capital. And who else needs a job? Our Septon needs a job. All oh, right, yes, it scrolls off the end of the screen. Um, Maester's going to serve the court and the Septum. Uh, we could try and convert, uh, potentially. We, uh, what what religion is Planktown? Uh, it is Mother Roin. Okay. Uh, we could try and convert it. I think we'll probably just um, probably just perform charity. Yeah, lower revolt risk seems like a good idea. Here, we're going to be training troops. That way we can get a larger army and potentially join in this uh, war if it seems to fit our needs. Anything else that we need to jump on? Probably not. Just checking that uh, our wife isn't in a position of power on our council. Because if she was, then we wouldn't be getting full benefit. But she's not. Here, we could fabricate claims, improve diplomatic relations. Um, I imagine we probably want to improve diplomatic relations here. Um, what... Well, like, it really depends who we think is going to win the war, right? Now, we're not going to improve diplomatic relations with the Lannisters. Um, yes, and it does, by the way, have Joffrey as a Lannister. People, when I previously played the mod, have questioned this, but it makes sense for the mechanics of CK2 for that to be the case. Anyway. Um, Stannis? Well, he's probably not going to win. He has 21,000 troops. I'm just checking if they've rebalanced the troop numbers. Um, Iron Throne only has 11,000, but I think that they have allies in the Reach and the Westerlands, right? Uh, it's not going to show me. But yeah, I think the I think the Westlands are in all the wars and the Reach are in all the wars. Yeah, yeah. So, although they don't have that many troops, uh, we do have 25,000 from the Reach and another 31,000 from the Westlands. So, Stannis is 21,000, probably not going to cut it. The Vale isn't in any wars. That's uh, Robert Aaron. And then we have the North who has 38,000. Um, so yeah. Oh no. In, in terms of people who could win. I guess the North are my uh, like bet if the Iron Throne doesn't win. The Iron Throne usually wins from if, what I remember. But anything could happen. So let's go and. You know let's improve relations with the North here. Let's see what we can do with that. 
And then our Castellan. Uh, yeah, sure, they can oversee the realm. Right, anything else that we need to do? No, we can hold Attorney for Sunspear. Probably not going to jump on that. Um, in terms of anything else, I don't think there's anything we need to do right now. So I think I'm going to unpause. And there's usually a few events when the game starts. So let's have a look. Prince Doran, I declare that my brother, Robert, left no trueborn issue of his body. The boy Joffrey and the boy Tommen and the girl Marce uh, Marcella being abominations of incest between Cersei Lannister and Sir Jaime the Kingslayer. By right of birth and blood, I do lay claim to the Iron Throne. Let all true men declare their loyalty. Signs Stannis of House Baratheon, the first of his name, King of the Andals, the Raynor, and the first men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, Protector of the Realm. Um, right. Well, we're not going to agree to that right now. Doran, he, he's more of a wait and see. We're not going to throw in our lot with the losing side right away. Right. Um, so... What we could potentially do, though, is see whether we can do what um, he did in the books and the show and try and get an, a marriage with uh, Marcella. So, or Marcella. So if we go for Tristane, matrilineal, they would say yes, but normally, no. Um, Were we that far off? Let's have a look here. I'm trying to count the number of things that are away. Uh, how much is Joffrey's opinion of me? Is negative five. Wait, and we still got a high chance? That seems unusual. Uh, wait, so positive opinion. It's actually quite high? Interesting. So, if we were to send a gift, he would potentially say... Are we, uh, yeah, he would potentially say yes to this. That does increase his opinion of me by 74. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna send him the gift. And I'm gonna try the marriage again, just to see if that works. He still says no. Opinion did go up, but not by enough. Okay, so it'd have to be matrilineal if we did that, and we're not really interested in a matrilineal marriage like that. Um, if I arrange marriage with oh, it would still be betrothal. I arrange betrothal with Quentin. That's still a no. Okay, well that's fine. Thought I'd have a look there. Um, now, do we have anybody else who still needs to be married? We have, uh, Ariane here. Uh, we could try and marry her to one of the other ones in here. So maybe Tommen? Although he's heir, so he's, they're gonna say no to that. Um, Edric Storm could be interesting. He has a claim on the Iron Throne. It would be a different way to, on the Seven Kingdoms. Yeah, it'd be a different way to go here. Let's try that. Uh, let's see whether you would marry matrilineally. No. Difference in age is a big one. I suppose that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Uh, and there's nobody else we could... We could marry them to one of our uh, sand uh, snakes here. Let's see. Well, the age is still going to be a difference. Sorella, maybe? That's still, a no, that's still a no. She's unimportant. Okay. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. So no marriage is happening there. So something's definitely different. Ooh. Looks like uh, Walder Frey is just declared neutral. Well, you know... Not unsurprising. We could maybe try and uh, get an alliance in the north here. Uh, maybe try and marry off to... Like, maybe try and marry Sansa or something like that. See how that goes. Range of betrothal between... So we can definitely get a marriage with Sansa here. Is that a good one for us? Potentially, potentially. I like that marriage actually quite a lot. That They seem to be matched up. It gives us a reason to join the war on the north side. Potentially a good way to go. Um, anyone else that we're looking for here? So what's the war? Uh, the North's war exact? Wait, are they actually in a war? Oh, they peaced out. Maybe. Wait, what? They were definitely in a war, right? They appear to have just peaced out the war. As a very interesting decision. Uh, okay, well, I guess the marriage with Sansa still makes a lot of sense, then? Yeah, maybe we'll try and get the marriage with Sansa going. I don't know why they pieced out the war, though. That's very interesting. Okay, we'll send that one off. Um, anyone we want to marry our daughter to? Could maybe try and get an alliance with the Reach, but that, again, seems like the wrong direction. 
Maybe uh, Robert Aaron could be a good marriage. Although she is our heir, I need to remember, because Dorn are... Yeah, they're cognatic primogenitor. So she's directly the heir. So we would have to get a matrilineal marriage, which isn't going to happen. I mean, if I have a look, he's just going to say no. Like matrilineal? Not a hope. Okay. Fair enough, fair enough. So we're, we're going to have a difficulty finding someone for her to marry. That's okay. Our son, I think there might be events for him, so we'll hold off. Right. Let's carry on. Ooh, the Trident are now independent. Interesting. And they're now being attacked in the Ironborn invasion of the North. Okay. They've just kind of given up on their uh, one here. But as Joffrey has agreed to uh, Christine marrying uh, Sansa. Well, that's good. Yeah. Okay. I'm still intrigued as to what's happening here. The wall is under assault. Um. Well, I don't feel like we need to go and attack the wall. Oh, I did forget one game rule. Um, I have made the invasions that happen up here, the White Walker invasions, what it called harder. I don't know what that means, but before they were laughable, so hopefully that means they're actually going to be difficult now. So we'll see what we can do there. How's this war going? Uh, so it's just Stannis' war for for the Iron Throne, and it's not looking great. He is winning, but, you know, he needs to kind of destroy things, otherwise he's going to be having issues. Definitely. Right. Um... Things are changing over there. Oh, what have we got? Arrange betrothal. Um, the king of Astapor would like to marry my niece. No. That seems fine. Right. Righteously imprisoned Lord Harmon. What's he trying to do? He is trying to replace somebody as master at arms. I'm not overly worried about it. Uh, my mission to Winterfell has been a success. You made Rob like me. Well, that's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. He still doesn't like me a lot, but, you know, it's happening. It's happening. He's, sw he's switching around to my way of thinking. Okay. With a little bit more money, we could potentially start building something somewhere. Old attorney? Not going to happen. Um, uh, Loreza here? Um, let's just give her... I don't know. I don't, I, why don't I have a thrift education? See how that goes for you. Uh, how many bastards does uh, Oberyn have? Quite a lot, obviously. Uh, why don't we give her an... Uh, we'll give her an intrigue education. I say we'll give her a learning ed... Oh, we can't give her that one. We'll give her an intrigue education. Yeah, sure. Not the one she's going to do best at, but she has a lot of intrigue already. Try and push into that a little bit. I've noticed my master at arms, Franklin Fowler, is a hard worker. Now everyone seems to like him. I'm deciding between having him heighten the morale of the warriors or to try and recruit more men. Uh, I want more men. Definitely. How many men do I have currently? A reasonable number. About 17,000. Not as strong as everyone else, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, that's now the north again. Interesting. Um, I guess they were... Oh, wait. Whoa, whoa. What's happened to the north here? The north's broken up into, like, all these tiny bits. As people have declared... Okay, so people are joining Stannis' war from the north now. Okay, interesting. So he must have broken free in a different war somewhere? Yeah, okay, so he declared a war, which then broke him free from the north, but now he's back under the north because of that, so that war is over. Okay. So Stannis' war is still the only one going, right? Yeah, still the only major war going that we need to care about. Okay, cool, cool. My prince, I've been offered a seat on the Conclave, the, gather the governing body of the Citadel, and the rank of Archmaester. This is a prestigious post, so I must accept. Um, I wish you luck. Yeah, sure. Does that fill the slot? No, but I can, okay, I can fill the slot anyway. I thought that was going to have a major point, but it doesn't really. Okay, that's fine. But we now have uh, Kedri being in a high position on the, in the Citadel. Not a major thing for us. I knocked on the door and heard him swear when something was knocked to the floor and broke by the sounds of it. When he finally called, come in, I opened the door and saw the messy room filled with weird looking glasses, stuffed exotic animals, and the man I was visiting in the middle of the mess with singed eyebrows. Have you tampered with the occult or get out of here and tell everyone? My maester. Yeah, have you tampered with the occult, maester? Your son, Tristane, uh, started breaking the rules of the games he plays with other children. Apparently, he thinks winning is more important than fair play. 
Oh, we're going to put a stop to that. Definitely. Definitely. Let's see. what. How did that go with him? Uh, he put a stop to it. Okay. Prince Tristane seems to be very interested in the garments of some of the courtiers are wearing. Yet, not in the usual lustful way. Prince Tristane is also interested in the fabrics themselves, not just what's underneath them. So I should try and stop these tendencies, or boys will be boys. Yeah, boys will be boys. Let them be fashionable. It's more of a Dornish thing, anyway. That's fine. Have a look at him here. Yeah, he's fashionable and deceitful. Interesting combo we've got uh, him going with so far. Uh, so this is arranged with... Uh, so, sorry, we propose that they marry. Oh, because we marry at 14, obviously, in this mod. That's a slight mod difference. Um, Yeah, I'll accept. So Sansa Stark has now arrived at our court. That's pretty good. The North is in complete chaos. It's now in the Northern Crossing de Jure War over the crossing. Okay, so they're trying to bring the phrase back underneath. The Iron Throne is... Um, Sansa's War is actually kind of even. Okay, let's have a look here. I think I clicked the wrong one previously. I wanted defensive stuff. Okay. So Stannis plus them versus uh, the, uh, the Iron Throne, the Westlands, the Reach, the Barrowlands, the Stonebridge, and Hornvale. Okay. So we could potentially throw a lot in with Stannis, but I don't think he's going to win. I think he's going to severely lose. Well, there's only 4,000 left there, 12,000 left there. They're actually pretty weak. If we threw a lot in with Stannis, we push him up from 14,000 to... Um, yeah, to 31,000, which, given how weak the Reach and... So we assume that the Reach and Joffrey, they're about equal to Stannis, and then the Westlands are equal to us. Okay, we could swing that. Hmm, I wonder if it's a good point to join the war. Now, if Stannis gets control, that's good for us, as it does weaken the Lannisters. Um, I think we might throw a lot in with Stannis, sure. Um, yeah, I think we want to throw a lot in with Stannis. Uh, well, where is Stannis right now? Oh, I can't. He doesn't... I'm trying to figure out where his troops are. You know what? Either way, I'm throwing a lot in with Stannis. Let's do that. And, um... Rebel's cause is just. Right. So we've joined Stannis. Uh, I'm going to raise our troops. Get them all to go somewhere. So all of our troops are going to head over here. And where are Stannis's... Oh, uh, Stannis' armies are there. Okay. So that's that's workable. It's workable. They're definitely not in a great position, but you know, we can we can help out here. We could we might want to go to the reach first, but maybe just going to Stannis' troops might be the better way about it. Anyway, I'm gonna end the episode here. Thank you for watching. And if you liked it, please consider leaving a comment, leaving a like, uh, you know, anything like that, subscribing. Basically it helps the channel and series grow, and I'm not gonna mention it again after this episode. So, thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.